Millions of Americans are born predisposed to high levels of a cholesterol called lipoprotein A. But now there's a new drug that could dramatically reduce the levels for up to one year. Joining us to discuss this drug is our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. Dr. Coley, good morning. Good morning. You were just asking if we've had this check. I don't think we've even heard of this before. So we're pretty interested to hear what you have to say. We know that all uh, cholesterol really is bad for our arteries. Apparently, there's one type, though, that's really harmful. Yeah, this is about six times as bad as our regular bad cholesterol, mm -hmm. which is the LDL. This is called lipoprotein A. And it's funny you say you've never heard of it because a lot of doctors, primary care doctors, don't routinely check it. So we call it a stealth cholesterol because it's something that's tricked the medical community for a long time. We didn't even know that it was bad. And in fact, 20% of us are walking around with numbers elevated. It's genetically determined, largely. So your diet, your exercise, your sleep, none of that stuff affects it. So we think it's the missing link between people who have a family history of heart disease and then they say, oh, I was healthy, I had a normal cholesterol, because this is this hidden or stealth cholesterol that many of us are walking around having numbers high. So aside from it being so stealthy, why is it so harmful? So it does a lot of bad things inside the artery. So it's really sticky. So it causes inflammation inside the walls of the arteries. It causes blood clots or thrombosis to occur inside the arteries. It causes cholesterol deposits to occur as well. And so all of those things put together make the cholesterol deposits get sort of angry and pop inside the artery. So it's been linked with heart attack. It's been linked to stroke. It's been linked to pregnancy loss. If you're a young woman who's carrying a pregnancy and have elevated levels, it can be linked to pregnancy loss as well. And it's been linked even to blockage of the heart valves, a condition called aortic stenosis. What about like diabetes? Could it play a role in, you know, somebody, we were just talking about this yesterday. All my numbers came back great from my physical, but I was determined to be pre-diabetic and we didn't know why that was. So we started looking at maybe changing my diet even more. Could this be maybe an answer for that? So diabetes and this, I would think of as parallel risk axes. Okay. So they're sort of two bad guys that team up to do horrible things. So you're pre-diabetic probably because of your genetics largely, because right. you're an exactly. active person. Maybe your ethnicity, because certain races, South Asians, for example, are more likely to be pre-diabetic even if they're thinner and in shape. But the LPA is a completely separate of how you look. And, and there are some races that can have higher levels of LPA, but there there are people that we're finding, when I'm checking it in my patients, I find people who are off the charts elevated. And as soon as I find them elevated, that triggers me to check their children, to check their siblings, to check their parents. And all of a sudden, I found a whole family that has literally a target sign on them that they're going to go on to get heart disease. Interesting. You mentioned that most doctors don't even like test for this. Why is that? And then is it covered by insurance? Yeah, so, so they don't test for it because it's a new kid on the block. They don't know about it. Some of them don't know what to do about it because, because up until now, we haven't really had medicines to treat it. So that they say, well, what am I going to do different? And I say you'll do a whole lot of things different. First, you'll, you'll put that person in a more aggressive prevention category. So you'll be more aggressive about other risk factors like prediabetes right. or the other cholesterol that we normally treat, the LDL cholesterol. Second, if you're older than 55 and have an elevated LPA, I might put you on an aspirin. You know, the aspirin a day keeps the doctor away. Right. We're not doing that for everyone now, but certain people like LPA patients, we would. And certainly I would trigger family member screening. Insurance is sort of plus minus. So it depends. Some of the commercial plans have been covering it. Some of them haven't. But even an out-of-pocket test is only about $100. You only need it once. It's not something you follow over time because, like I said, it's largely genetically determined. So even if it means paying for it, I would recommend everybody get it. Interesting. Okay, what's the homework for us right now? What is the take-home message here? Every single person, you, yourself, your family members, your children need to have an LPA checked once in their life because okay. it's going to change the course of how we think about your heart disease risk. If it's elevated, talk to your doctor. Your doctor may not think to order it, so make sure you ask about this test at your annual physical. And any doctor can order it, whether it's a primary care, your gynecologist, your cardiologist, any of those doctors can order it for you. And real quick, we're almost out of time, but we talked about this new experimental drug for it. Yeah. It can really help out for a whole year, right? Yes. So we're so excited about this drug because now we have not one, not two, three drugs coming next year to reduce your LPA levels by 94% with a single injection. Wow. And you can get the injection to last a year. You can give it every six months, but it's turning the volume down on your LPA. We just have to prove that that prevents heart attacks. That's what we're waiting to do, wow. but it's safe. It's effective. And so if your levels are elevated, you may qualify for this next year. Fascinating. Okay. Good to know too. Dr. Coley, thank you very much.